This is DIY Hi-Fi Life. Today, I show you how to create a small and cheap rune endpoint. This could be the smallest and cheapest endpoint yet for rune. Today on DIY Hi-Fi Life. <music> Hello again and welcome back to DIY Hi-Fi Life. I'm Chris Barker and today I have a fun little project that won't take you much time and uh, is very inexpensive. And I'm going to show you how to create a rune endpoint for $15 using the just released Raspberry Pi 02W. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, Raspberry Pi is very popular amongst uh, Rune uh, enthusiasts for creating uh, their own endpoint uh, devices for use in their stereos. And uh, that's worked out very well, and there's uh, many good software solutions to uh, load onto your Raspberry Pi to do so. The one sticking point was that the um, original generation of Raspberry Pi Zero devices did not support um, the Rune bridge because it required, I think, a 64-bit um, uh, chip, which the, the Raspberry Pi Zero originally only had a 32-bit ARM chip. Well, good news. Uh, just very recently, the Raspberry Pi uh, Association created a, and released a new um, Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, and it looks like this. This is the exact uh, item in, in question. And you can pick these up if you shop carefully for about $15. The, uh, I'll have links below uh, that you'll want to check out. And of course, please subscribe and like this video uh, as well. That helps out this channel very much. Uh, getting back to this uh, new release, uh, basically this has been upgraded to a 64-bit ARM chip. Uh, and uh, the Cortex-A53 CPU with an integrated broadcam chip and it has wireless LAN uh, 802.11 BG and N supported Bluetooth 4.2 and uh, 512 megabytes of SD RAM and as I said the most important thing for Rune users enthusiasts out there is that this supports um, a 64-bit chip now and so Rune uh, Bridge can run on this chip so it's very straightforward to set this up and all you need to do is um, load the software onto this uh, micro SD card here that we have just very simple and then uh, boot it up and you bang uh, you can set it up in Rune and you're ready to go. Uh, this will stream very via the USB port up to 384k so uh, this is a, a very high quality bit perfect audio and very unobtrusive so this will work out very nicely in a many different um, situations. For example I have here a little rig I just put together with a FIO DAC amp uh, many people make these little devices and I have a, what I just showed you another uh, room uh, 02 in this little uh, case and I've got my power coming in and then my uh, USB DAC uh, hooked up here and uh, this is a very nice little uh, portable uh, uh, headphone rig I could probably even hook this up to maybe a um, battery portable battery and this could be kind of a mobile battery kind of situation around the house as well so that's a nice little setup of course you could uh, this solution will work with bigger DACs whatever DAC you want to work with um, let me go into a few more details here um, Ropey right now which is one of the the most popular Rune endpoint software is, as far as I know does not support the the Pi Zero I had a uh, put a, a Twitter uh, message into the developer but I haven't heard back about whether uh, that something like this might be forthcoming uh, from uh, Ropey but we'll see but in the meantime that doesn't mean you can't do it yourself and roll your own which is a lot really not that hard and pretty uh, straightforward and I'll give you the basic details right now on how that's done what I decided to do was uh, go with uh, something called Diet Pi which is very nice uh, um, Raspberry Pi distro uh, and I like it because it um, runs as a headless uh, thing so you don't have to have a monitor hooked up like Raspberry Pi and that kind of thing to set it up and basically you want to download the, the Diet Pi and it's the same uh, distro for example that Allo Digital uses for their um, devices as well. Diet Pi is very easy to install and there's a ton of information on their website on how to set it up and it's just a matter of downloading the um, ISO to uh, your computer, 
Mac, PC, whatever, and then using a little piece of software to write that ISO to an SD card so it makes it bootable for the distro. Then um, the only things, the tricky things you have to do is you need to do a little bit of setup on that uh, card that you've just created. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero only has a Wi-Fi built in, but doesn't have a built in Ethernet jack. So if you want it to come right up on your network, what you're going to have to do is once you've written the distro to the SD card, then you'll need to edit two files that are visible on uh, the, the card uh, via your PC or Mac. Uh, they're called dietpi.txt and dietpiwifi.txt. And I'll have a link again down below to instructions on what to do. But basically, you just need to put in your credentials for your Wi Fi network in those text files and then and enable the Wi-Fi uh, automatically at boot up and then once that's done you save that those text files and then you can take that uh, SD card and stick it in your um, Pi Zero 2 and boot it up on your network and then um, there's a couple of other things you need to do once it's booted on your network you'll need to find the IP address of course I use something called advanced IP scanner there's a lot of tools out there that help you find it and the default host name is uh, called Diet Pi. And once you've got that on your network, then you need to um, use something called SSH, uh, use a terminal application or PuTTY or something to uh, connect to the Raspberry Pi. And then using the default uh, credentials for Diet Pi, you log in. And once you've done that, you'll run the update script for the uh, software to make sure that it's got the latest um, updates from the network. It'll do that. And then what you want to do is run the um, Diet Pi config uh, routine. It's kind of menu driven, so it's pretty easy. And you need to take a f uh, care of a, f a few extra steps. So uh, once you're in the menu system for configuring your Diet Pi installation, uh, you'll want to go into the install software section, and you'll uh, there's a whole bunch of software that you can install. You really don't need to add much extra, except you want to install the Rune Bridge, which is the critical piece, which will make the Raspberry Pi look like a Rune endpoint to your Rune server on your network. So you go ahead and install that. There's only a couple other things that I rec would recommend that you do. You would also want to then go into the configuration for the audio section in the menu system. And you want to change the uh, default output for the audio to um, USB, because if you're not going to use a hat, uh, a DAC hat for your Raspberry Pi, you'll want to just use USB, which makes it very simple and easy. So you change that to USB because then once you um, boot it up with your uh, preferred DAC, it'll automatically configure and connect to your DAC and you'll be ready to go. There's only one other thing I would uh, recommend is maybe just uh, change the host name of your Raspberry Pi on your network so you can go into the uh, security area and change the host name in the menu system. I use something like uh, Rune Pi 02 for my host name. Just uh, you can use whatever you want to, to make sense for you. And that's about it. Then you just have to um, button it all up and then. Um, reboot and plug it into your favorite DAC. Any DAC will work. As I said, I've got my little uh, Fio headphone DAC here, uh, but it'll work with any DAC you choose. And uh, the only thing left to do then is just to go into the Rune software and just enable it just like other any other endpoint um, on your network and you should be ready to go. And that's it. And voila, for $15 you have a very small and inexpensive Rune endpoint. So a few more details to round out your new $15 Rune endpoint. Uh, you might like to get a case, for example. I have this nice case uh, for it, just to make it a little, little nicer to look at. And uh, you can also get a case that looks like this, very easy as well. Uh, many choices out there. I think I have a link down below again for uh, choices that you can look at. One other thing that's very useful is um, when you're connecting uh, your um, USB DAC, you need uh, some adapters. And uh, some adapters that I found that are very nice are these um, USB micro SD on the go OTG adapters. They're just very tiny because the Raspberry Pi only has micro SD connectors here. So you want to put this in, uh, this will just hook into your Raspberry Pi like so. And then an ordinarily USB uh, B. Um, connector here will go uh, attached to that. So for example, if I were to connect the um, 
Raspberry Pi up to a normal desktop or a, a system DAC that has a, a US, traditionally a USB A and B connector, I can use this adapter to um, make it work for me like this. So, um, and of course, if you're using your phone or something, there's a lot of different ways, you know, USB-C connectors, all that kind of thing. So you're going to need the right adapter for your situation. But this is a, a these little um, adapters, you can buy a bunch of them like a bag here. I'll have a link down below uh, to get those. Makes life easier for uh, uh, making all these inter interconnects uh, uh, for your new Raspberry Pi. So I've been using it, uh, listening to some headphones, and uh, it sounds just great to me. And uh, it's per bit perfect, and will stream all your uh, audio, uh, be it from Quo Buzz, uh, your local NAS, or whatever, however your Rune is set up, title, that type of thing. And it works very nicely. So I think this now is officially probably the smallest, cheapest uh, Rune endpoint one can uh, create and uh, set up, and is uh, really a great way to go. So hopefully you, uh, some of you out there in the uh, DIY Hi-Fi Life community will find this interesting and uh, give this a shot. And I'd love to hear your feedback on those that set this up. Once again, I'm very thankful for all the views of my videos and the great feedback I'm getting. And I hope that you find these uh, continued ideas that I come up with of interest. And I uh, will keep doing that. And I do appreciate you uh, stopping by. And if you can subscribe, that would be great. A like would be also very helpful. And I hope uh, 2021 has uh, been a, a pretty good year for you. We're winding down. And I uh, have a lot of new ideas for the new year that I'll be uh, coming up with. And I hope you can stick around for uh, DIY Hi-Fi Life. So this is Chris Barker, once again for DIY Hi-Fi Life, signing out.